Hello and welcome to BCM 325 Future Cultures. In this video, I want to provide a primer for thinking about the role of futurist and to get you to contemplate how to take on futurology as part of your own work and thinking within the creative industries, whether it is working in social media management, screen production, marketing and advertising, journalism, visual communication and design, or a number of other fields. Over the course of the last century, futurists, sometimes called futurologists, have been scientists, writers, scholars, and entrepreneurs who have explored the possibilities of the future. It is the futurist's job to analyze data from the past, identify current trends, and offer predictions in both factual and fictional forms. In previous videos, we have looked at those who have imagined what life might be like in the short, medium, and long-term future. We have talked about futurists like H.G. Wells and Arthur C. Clarke, Ossip K. Fletchtheim and Bertrand de Juvenel. Many futurists work for think tanks like Rand Corporation, which we've covered in previous videos. And many futurists do work as public speakers, researchers, consultants, and have TED Talks and work with clients, companies, and businesses to achieve specific goals in often innovative and sometimes radical ways. Over time, I intend to produce a series of more focused videos on important futurists like Marshall McLuhan, Alvin Toffler, Donna Haraway, and Carl Sagan. But in this video, I want to focus on mapping some of the connections between futurists and their ideas. This map is going to be incomplete, so I want to start with a broad understanding of people whose main occupation is thinking about the future and come to terms with the obligations and limitations of being a public futurist. By now, you're probably familiar with the other Future Culture videos, and you will be well versed in the work of Wendell Bell, a futurist and sociologist who argues that there are many types of futurists. Some are innovators and inventors, some are CEOs and entrepreneurs, while other futurists aim to educate and communicate. There is also an important category of futurists who are activists. Quote, other futurists, taking a long-range and holistic view of the world, have much broader and public-oriented goals. They aim to raise the level of human understanding and consciousness about the interrelatedness of all people to each other. Despite the apparent cultural diversity in the world, many futurists believe that humans everywhere, both as biological and cultural beings, have much in common. Futurists see similarities not only in basic needs, but also in human goals and values. They see too the global growth of mutuality and the need to define the collective aspirations of all humanity. In the broadest sense, futurists hope to inform people's expectations of the future and to help make their efforts shape the future. The social responsibility of futurists, argues Eleonora Massini, another futurist we have spoken about in previous videos is not simply to aspire to transform the present with visions of a utopian future or alternatives to the present world order, but to undertake a project in which you persuade the world to move towards a more pluralistic future through creative and imaginative analysis and productive action. A futurist must do as well as imagine. Futurists, according to Wendell Bell, have a common goal. They seek to know what can or could be the possible, what is likely to be the probable, and what ought to be the preferable. Alvin Toffler, the author of Future Shock in 1970, suggested that it is the futurist's job to create the new and to find alternative images of the future. In previous videos, we have addressed this idea of images of the future, which isn't simply futuristic imagery, but rather policy, writing, 
speculation, and representation of how the future might be. Whether it is augmented reality, biohacking, artificial intelligence, global warming, or refugee support, or approaches to energy, health, and education. Toffler argued that visionary explorations were needed to understand what was probable or likely to occur, and futurists need to be able to offer a moral and ethical evaluation for what was preferable to occur. One of my favorite quotes, which I think goes a long way to frame the type of capacity a futurist must have, is from Toffler, who wrote that the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Toffler's point that futurists do not ignore the present is another reminder about the function of futurists, which is to effect change now, not just at some later point. Long-term planning isn't about enacting plans at some point in the future. It is about actively affecting action in the present that will have long-term benefits and outcomes. Futurists have to be good at history. This is crucial because you can't understand the present and plan for the future unless you have a good grasp on the past. Short-term, medium-term, and long-term planning all require that you be able to make informed decisions and implement changes in the present. In this section, I want to provide an overview of current and past futurists and map the relationships between their overlapping interests. It is important to remember that to be a futurist is to take on both a persona and a perspective, which involves analyzing current trends and investing time and energy into developing your own unique ideas about the future. So this is going to be a brief overview of the people who call themselves futurists and will include authors, consultants, entrepreneurs, thinkers, and public intellectuals who engaged in different ways and means for advising, imagining, and talking about possible futures. Not all of these figures in the map identify themselves as futurists or futurologists, but they have all made important contributions to the way we think about the future. As I mentioned earlier, I intend to follow up this video with a series of short videos highlighting the work of individuals where we can recognize the more recent diversity that has been emerging in the field of futurology and futures thinking. But because I don't want this video to be three hours long, I'm going to keep the overview very brief. First, some important futurists. Joachim of Fiore was an Italian theologian in 12th century CE and a founder of a monastic order He developed a philosophy of history known as millennialism, in which time is believed to be moving forward toward a fundamental transformation of society. This type of thinking changed our perspective of time, moving away from the more cyclical view of history and towards the idea that linear time was moving towards an endpoint, an apocalypse. Roger Bacon was a Franciscan friar and a medieval English philosopher who placed emphasis on the study of nature through empiricism, that is, the recording of data through human senses and technologies, which contributed to the development of the natural philosophers and eventually the modern scientific method. Buckminster Fuller was a very influential architect, cosmologist, designer, and a primary contributor to the development of systems thinking, which has been central to the work of futures studies and think tanks for decades. Many of you will have heard the name Nikola Tesla, who is a Serbian-American inventor and electrical and mechanical engineer. Tesla is the internet's favorite futurist, who is best known for his work on the alternating current induction motor, which made washing machines, vacuum cleaners, refrigerators, and other modern devices possible. Richard Feynman was a theoretical physicist who specialized in quantum mechanics, and he was a beautiful science communicator. He had a lovely television segment called Fun to Imagine, which is available on YouTube, and I'll put the links into the details below. Definitely worth a watch. Stephen Hawking was an influential astrophysicist, a cosmologist, an author. Hawking was a professor of mathematics who predicted the existence of black holes and supported the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. 
changing the way we understand the universe. Bruce Sterling is another important futurist, and he now works in living design as an information technologist. Let's switch and look at futurological topics and the futurists associated with them. Transhumanism is a philosophical movement, a school of thought, concerned with the transformation of the human condition by developing new technologies to expand the human intellect and physiology and make these breakthroughs available to everyone. Transhumanists examine the benefits and the ethical problems of using new technologies to improve the human condition. The earliest transhumanist thinking informed the science of eugenics and led to the speculation about space colonization, bionic implants, gene editing, and cognitive enhancement. One of the first transhuman futurists was F.M. Esfandieri, known as F.M. 2030 a Belgian, Iranian, American philosopher, author, and athlete whose work on the new concepts of the human identified technologies, lifestyles, and work views that would assist in transitioning humans to a post-human status. His book, Are You a Transhuman? Monitoring and Stimulating Your Personal Rate of Growth in a Rapidly Changing World was published in 1989. The work of philosopher Max Moore has helped to develop the transhumanist doctrine. In his book, Principles of Extropy, he argues that transhumanism embraces many elements of humanism, including a respect for reason and science, a commitment to progress, and a valuing of human or transhuman life. However, transhumanism differs from humanism as it recognizes and anticipates radical alterations to our lives resulting from various scientific and technological breakthroughs. Some transhumanists to check out on Twitter include Ryan O'Shea, who is very involved in biohacking ethics, at Ryan O'Shea. Timothy Cannon is another biohacker, but he has his own biotechnology startup company, which creates technology to augment human abilities. He has a number of personal body modification implants and is a well-known cyborg. He's on Twitter, at Tim the Cyborg. Nayef Al-Rodhan, on Twitter as at Sustain History, is a philosopher, neuroscientist, and geostrategist. His work on transhumanism overlaps with the philosophy and science of the brain, and he has an interest in sustainability, governance, and space exploration. Transhumanism and space exploration connect via the concept of the cyborg, and we'll actually look at Donna Haraway's work on cyborgs in a later video. But it was Manfred Klein's and Nathan Klein, who in 1960 published an essay titled Cyborgs in Space which considered the limitations of the human body that had evolved in a terrestrial biosphere and the challenges of operating in space. They argue that rather than trying to recreate the environmental conditions necessary for human life in space, which could pop at any time like a bubble, we need to change the human body to adapt to space. They coined the term cyborg to refer to a human altered by technology who could then explore space without the problems associated with the lack of gravity, increased exposure to radiation, and the lack of atmosphere. Stuart Brand is an author and is a famous activist for his campaign in the 1960s, which appealed to NASA to make a picture of the whole Earth from space available to the public. This resulted in the famous image known as Earthrise, which is a picture of the Earth from the moon's orbit. Earthrise, along with other NASA images of Earth and space, inspired multiple generations to support the exploration of the solar system. To quote Brand, the Earthrise image gave the sense that Earth is an island, surrounded by a lot of inhospitable space. And it's so graphic, this little blue, white, green, and brown jewel, an icon amongst a quiet, featureless black vacuum. Gerard K. O'Neill was a famous American physicist and activist for space exploration and colonization. He developed plans to build human settlements in space. He proposed the idea of giant cylindrical space colonies, huge rotating cylinders in space 
30 kilometers long, and we are only just beginning to catch up with his vision and imagination, technologically speaking. Elon Musk is another visionary figure that needs his own video. Musk is an entrepreneur and engineer, a CEO of SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, and The Boring Company, and a co-founder of PayPal. SpaceX is a private American aerospace company building rockets and researching space transportation and exploration with the aim of colonizing Mars. Musk is driven by the idea that humanity should not have all its eggs in one basket and that we need to be a multi-planetary species. He intends to begin operationalizing plans for Mars colonization in the 2020s. Another important intersection I want to point out is the connection between transhumanism and artificial intelligence. George Dvorsky on Twitter at Dvorsky is a futurist and bioethicist, a contributing editor at Gizmodo. He is a public speaker who advocates for the ethical approaches to transhumanist and artificial intelligence research. One of the goals of the transhumanist movement is to navigate the ethical dilemma of creating artificial intelligent life. Another important connection between transhumanism and artificial intelligence and space exploration is the work of roboticist Hans Moravec, a futurist who made important contributions to thinking about the relationship between humans, robots, and artificial intelligence. Moravec is interested in navigating between the complacent and the apocalyptic poles of post-humanism. He suggests that human identity is made up of information patterns, and therefore it is possible to one day be able to download the human consciousness into a computer. His idea is popular in science fiction, and we can see it in the Ghost in the Shell and the Matrix, two texts that we're going to be examining in this course. The connection between transhumanism and artificial intelligence is a complex one because a post-human condition might mean a post-biological one. Nick Bostrom is a Swedish philosopher whose work on the existential risk, ethics of human enhancement and superintelligence crosses over between AI, robotics and transhumanism. Bostrom believes that the artificial general intelligence, which means AI that can perform the intellectual tasks that a human can, also known as strong AI or full AI, could potentially wipe out humanity in an act of precautionary self-preservation, the Terminator problem. This is a view shared by both Bill Gates and Elon Musk. There are a number of important branches and subtypes of artificial intelligence that is beyond the scope of this video, so I'm going to link to a really great article which provides a comprehensive breakdown in the details below. Futurists like Ray Kurzweil are concerned with the notion of the technological singularity, the point at which technological innovation accelerates to infinity, fundamentally changing the nature of what it means to be human. Kurzweil is a major futurist, an inventor and transhumanist, an author of multiple books on artificial intelligence and the technological singularity. He's another figure that I'll have to do a whole video on. But for now, I'll link you to a recent interview with him in the notes below. Kurzweil's book, The Singularity is Near, is based on the concept of the singularity popularized by math professor and science fiction author Werner Vinge in his essay called The Coming Technological Singularity from 1993, which will be in the readings for this week. Kurzweil is interested in the law of accelerating returns which forecasts an exponential increase in the capacities of computers, robots, genetics, nanotechnology, and AI. The concept of the singularity goes back to the work of computer scientist John von Neumann and cryptologist I.J. Good following World War II, who thought of the term technological singularity as referring to a point in time where technology advancement occurs so rapidly that it appears instantaneous. I.J. Good is quoted as saying that a truly intelligent machine is the last invention that humanity needs to make as it will invent everything we want after that. Between AI and robot futurists, 
you have people working on the ethics of artificial intelligence, focusing on both the philosophical but also the programming problems of how to build ethical, responsible machines. A Jung Moon is an internationally renowned roboticist who works with others at the Open Robotics Institute. This kind of work is foundational for thinking about the future of new technologies like automation and self-driving cars. Which brings us more generally to the technological futurists. I'm not sure if Bill Gates would self-identify as a futurologist exactly, but he is an important technologist and an American billionaire, the co-founder of Microsoft, who has invested his fortune in philanthropy and humanitarianism. He is often speaking about the future of technology and the planet in the media. Ted Nelson is another technologist, a writer, philosopher, and the creator of Hypertext. Next time you click on a link and you are transported to a new destination online, you can thank Ted Nelson. He was inspired by the work of Vannevar Bush, an American engineer, inventor, and science administrator who proposed a device called the Memex. Bush created the Memex in 1945, or at least proposed the idea of this computer-like machine that would function as a knowledge creation engine. And he inspired a generation of thinkers and people like Tim Berners-Lee, who designed the first iteration of the World Wide Web. Jumping now to futurists working in the philosophical, ecological, and environmental domain, we see people like Alan Marshall, who is a New Zealand author, artist, and scholar contributing to the field of environmental philosophy. Environmentalism, technology, and design overlap in the work of futurist Mitchell Jokum who is a designer of environmental cities. His focus is on resilient cities and adapting ecological principles to architecture and both urban and industrial design. His work is fascinating, and I'll share his TED Talk in the links below, which features proposals for green cities, soft cars, and robots built out of waste. Okay, super quick rundown of major authors and science fiction writers who can be thought of as futurists. Carl Sagan, Isaac Asimov, Hugo Gernsback, who is credited as creating the term science fiction, the annual science fiction awards the Hugos are named after him, Stanislaw Lem, Arthur C. Clarke, Jules Verne, who predicted aviation, submarine travel and spaceflight, H.G. Wells, possibly the first to think of himself as a futurist. Karel Kapek, who invented the word robot. Aldous Huxley, Walt Disney, Robert A. Heinlein, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek. Philip K. Dick, Michael Crichton, David Brun, Ursula Le Guin, Kim Stanley Robinson, William Gibson, and Neil Stevenson, the writer of one of my favorite cyberpunk novels, Snow Crash. Last round. Bringing some balance to the force with a very quick highlight of a few important women futurists. Dala Jane Gilroy, a British academic and fashion designer. Joanne Pransky, a self-described robot psychiatrist. She's on Twitter, at RoboShrink. Jodie Turner, entrepreneur, futurist and brand anthropologist. She's on Twitter, at Culture of Future. Magda Cordell McHale was an artist, futurist, and educator. Hazel Henderson is a British futurist and economic iconoclast who wrote the book Ethical Markets, Growing the Green Economy. Natasha Vita Moore, an American designer, innovator, and author. And Lisa Kager, a London-based futurist of consumer studies who founded the Kager Global Forecasting Agency that works with major brands and corporations like Sony and Ikea. She's on Twitter, at Kager Global. Amber Case, a technologist and writer of the book Calm Technology. She's on Twitter, at Case Organic. Amelia Corman is a London-based futurist, speaker, and author who has written on augmented reality and virtual reality technologies, at Amelia Coleman. Dr. May Jemison is the first woman of color in space. She is an astronaut, an explorer, and a futurist. She was also famously featured in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. 
She's on Twitter at May Jemison. Amy Webb is a quantitative futurist and a recently an author of the book The Big Nine, which examines who will have control over artificial intelligence in the future. She's on Twitter at Amy Webb. Paola DeLuca is a futurist and trend forecaster with a particular focus in luxury goods such as jewellery and accessories. At DE Futurist. Carolyn Palmer is also a fashion futurist and a director of content and social at Amazon Fashion. At Caroline Palmer. And finally, Shannon Grinnell, a podcaster and futurist in the field of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and blockchain. She's on Twitter at Speaking Crypto. So there you have it a super brief overview of the job of the futurist the types of topics, concepts, and problems they are tackling, and a highlight reel of some of the most important futurologists past and present. Hopefully, this has inspired you to check a few of them out on Wikipedia and the web, and to follow some via Twitter. The final point I want to make is, you don't have to be a futurist to think like one. No matter what kind of job you find yourself in, or aim towards, take on the qualities of a futurologist. Analyze problems and issues by examining current trends and past data. Then, propose potential solutions based on what is practical and possible and preferable. And remember, the future is now.